In this video, I'll talk about text and annotation and controlling annotation scale. Now first, what is annotation? In general, the concept of annotation is text-based objects that are used as symbols, notes, or other explanation to understand a drawing. Now, pretty much all the stuff we've drawn up to this point has focused on physical parts of a plan or a section, etc lines and things like that that actually represent parts of a building or a plan. Now text is kind of a whole different animal because it's not really part of the building or the plan itself. You know it's not going to be painted on the floor normally. You know it's more like a room name or a note to identify a material etc. So it kind of brings up all new issues and that's the sense of scale because up to this point everything we've drawn has been a one-to-one -one true size meaning you draw the plan at the size of the actual buildings constructed. So this is the first time when you really need to consider scale and how you're going to treat a drawing in the sense of communicating it to other people. The reason that it's an issue when it comes to text is because when you look at a final printed set of drawings, you ideally want the text to be consistent. Now, that's not really very hard to do, except for the fact that a lot of times a set of drawings is working with more than one scale. You might have a plan that's at a quarter inch per foot and then details that are at one inch per foot and then maybe some elevations that are at half inch per foot. And so in order for all the text of those three different scales in order to look consistent, you have to plan ahead and make your text the appropriate size so that the text when you print it at the three different scales will look the same. Now the first step is always to set up a text style. The word style in general when it relates to text is what's going to drive the font of the text that you're using. And it also often has to do with the size of the text as well. So in setting it up ahead of time, it's very easy to go back and change it later if you change your mind on what the font should be or the size, etc. Rather than having to fix it manually on every piece of text that you make. If you make a style in advance, then it's very easy to change the font down the road. If you don't set up a style in advance, it's difficult to change the font down the road. So that's why you want to plan ahead and do the, the right steps in that aspect. Now, on your uh, home section of the ribbon, you should have an annotation panel. If you click on the word annotation, it pulls down with some additional options. And these are the options that relate to styles. So you'll notice uh, there's kind of a pair of an icon with a pull down and then another icon and a pull down in four rows. The first row has to do with the text style. The pull down shows you the current text style as it's currently set up. The uh, little icon that has the paintbrush allows you to modify the text style. So that's what I'm going to start with in order to verify the settings for the text styles that are in this drawing. So I'm going to hit that little icon that has the A in the paintbrush. And if you hover, it should say text style. This opens your text style manager. You could also type style in order to open this. That would work fine. You'll notice that it says the current text style at the top. So right now mine is annotative. And then it has the uh, annotative style highlighted on the left. And then it has a font uh, to the right of that that's currently set up to be used for that style. Now, most of the time people want text that is easy to read as possible. Uh, for technical drawings especially. So I'm going to scroll up and choose Arial here. Um, make sure you don't choose an Arial that has an at sign in front of it. You want one that just says all by itself, Arial, although it might have a TT for true type in front and then Arial. That's going to be nice and simple and easy to read and uh, it's going to work the way you expect. Uh, I say that because some of the other Arial fonts in here will have some odd properties at times. Now, underneath the font name, once you choose the font that you want, there's a checkbox for annotative. This is what I was referencing when I said there are some newer features in the uh, newer versions of AutoCAD. And by making it annotative, meaning check the box there, that's going to allow the text to uh, correspond itself in terms of the size with a, a scale that you choose. In other words, you can decide, okay, I want to print this drawing at, let's say, a quarter inch per foot, and then you would automatically be able to tie that to the text in order to make the size right. Otherwise, you have to either use a chart or do a little bit of math 
to figure out what the proper text size is, and I'll come back to that later. So just check the box, and then you have the option here for paper text height. Paper means what is the desired printed final text height on the paper. So some people would leave this as zero, and that allows each piece of text to change to be whatever you want. Uh, other people would tell you that all the text should be consistent on that style, and therefore you can type it in here. So there's kind of two different ways. I'm going to type in 330 seconds as a standard note size on technical drawings. That's pretty common. So I'm going to set up all my text to be 330 seconds that I'm using for this style. It's easy to make a couple styles if you want, like you might have a style for headings and then a style for other general notes, and then you could set up your size to be different between those two. If you type 330 seconds and it rounds itself off automatically to something like an eighth, that just means that your drawing precision is set to something like an eighth or a quarter, and it's rounding off. It's still going to work exactly the same, and it would still be 330 seconds, even if it rounds off. So that's pretty much all we need to do in here right now. Um, my current text style does say annotative. If it doesn't, you can double click on the style and then say yes if you want to save your changes. Or you can hit set current on the upper right and that will set it to the current style. So by making it current, that means when we make text, it's going to be on that style automatically. Now we can hit close and we're ready to go. So now when I make text, it's going to be annotative, it's going to be aerial, and it's going to be 330 seconds. So it's a little bit of setup in the front makes it a lot easier when you're actually making the text. Okay, so now what about this whole annotative thing? Now you have to look for your annotative scale button, and it's going to be somewhere toward the lower right, either on the very bottom status bar or on the status bar above the command line, depending on what version of AutoCAD you're using. So this is where you have to make a conscious decision about what is the intended print scale and choose that scale here because that's going to drive the size of the text. You can change it later, so it's not set in stone. But you really need to plan ahead because otherwise you're going to have text sizes all over the map by that time you print. So I'm going to say hypothetically a quarter inch per foot, and so I'm going to choose that. And uh, then you can make your text, and it will be sized based upon quarter inch per foot scale and then a printed desired height of 330 seconds. Now I can uh, make the text. I'm ready to do that. You can hit your A icon at the top for multi-line text. Or if you're a typer, you can type T or MT for multi-line text. It's called multi-line because it's a lot like a word processor. It has indents and paragraphs and all kinds of good properties that way. Now I have this red rectangle just because I wanted something that represented the size of a floor plan. If you make the text in a totally empty file, you have no idea of the sense of scale or size, so it's easy to kind of do it a little bit odd. So give yourself something to give you a concept of size, like a small floor plan outline or something. So you start your command, again with the icon or with T or MT, and you're clicking two corners to represent a text box. It's a lot like drawing a rectangle. As soon as you click the second corner, then your text editor will open and that gives you a few things. It gives you a little ruler, the text box is where you actually type your text, and then your ribbon will change to give you various properties. You may or may not have this text formatting um, bar right here. That may not show up for you. That's just kind of an option in how AutoCAD works. So most of the time the ribbon is going to be where you are predominantly going to have your options if you don't have this uh, bar that I have. So you can see there's your current style, uh, there's your size, so you could override that. But generally speaking, if you're setting up your style the way that I was, that's already done for you. You can see that you have bold and underline, justification, bulleted lists, etc., spell check. Uh, so you have a bunch of options. Otherwise, down here in this uh, flashing cursor under the ruler is where you would type your note in. I'm going to turn on my caps lock because, generally speaking, on technical drawings, you use all caps. So you can type in your note. If you wanted to change any properties, it's a lot like a word processor like Microsoft Word. You can highlight the text and then change it to center justified, change it to bold or underlined, anything like that that you wanted. 
when you're finished, you can hit close text editor on the ribbon, or you can click anywhere outside the text box in your drawing space. And that exits the drawing or the text command and finalizes the text. Now mine happens to be on the wall layer. If you were good about your layers, you would make a text layer or a note layer and use that. Now, if you want to edit the text, you can double click on it. Double click. If you miss when you double click, then you're going to start a window. So then you would have to hit escape and try double clicking again. It's easy to miss because you might click, you know, just in between the letters or something like that. You can zoom in, zoom out as you need to, to make it easy to read. Um, you also have the width grip is the little diamond at the end of the ruler. And that allows you to control how much space the note is taking up horizontally. And that's what's really nice about multi-aligned text is you can fit it into a drawing very easily by adjusting that grip in or out in order to uh, make it fit in between other objects in your drawing. So that's kind of how text works. Now you also, if you wanted to adjust the width, you could use the grips after you're finished with the text because you have the little triangle grip that controls the width there. That does the same thing. Uh, so that's the basics of doing text. Now the annotation scale, remember we had to set beforehand. If you are not sure if you did that right or you want to check it or look at it, you can always select your text and go to the properties palette. You can get to that by right click in properties after selecting it. And you can see it has the style, it has the annotative scale, and it does have the paper text height. So if you wanted to change the annotation scale, you could select that here in the properties palette, hit your three little circles uh, or your icon that has those three little black dots. And then I can add an additional scale, let's say a quarter or eighth scale, and I can go and delete the quarter scale if I want and hit OK. And uh, you could see the note get larger when I did that. Now that makes sense because if you print at eighth scale, your drawing is not being blown up as much as if you printed at quarter scale. So when the note got larger, that's going to compensate for the fact that the eighth inch scale plan is printed at half the size of the quarter inch scale plan. And that's how the whole process works of making it consistent when you print. Now, I mentioned that not everybody uh, uses the annotative scale. Uh, so you don't have to use annotation scale. Some people just are more old school. They prefer not to worry about it. If that's the case, notice that uh, when I looked at the text in the properties palette, it says a model text height and it says paper text height. So back in the olden days before annotation scale existed, you would kind of either do uh, the mathematics of the ratio of the scale. Like for example, an eighth inch scale is eighth inch per foot. That's a scale factor of one to 96 mathematically. So if you wanted your text to be 330 seconds, you can multiply that by 96. And that would tell you that your text needs to be nine inches tall in order to print at 330 seconds when you print at eighth inch per foot. So that's what you used to have to do before you used annotation scale is you would decide that your text needed to be nine inches and then you just made it nine inches. And then you didn't have to worry about it being the annotation scale right and all that stuff. So you, a lot of people would have a little chart next to their computer to tell them what the scale needed to be, or they would have styles that were pre-set up based upon the various scales so that it would be right. So that's more of the old method and it's still fairly common. I want to make a point to emphasize the fact that this annotation scale button has no bearing on objects in your drawing other than annotation and text. So lines, circles, arcs, all that stuff that is just strictly full scale representations of parts of the building has nothing to do with the annotation scale. So you continue to draw that at full size. The other thing to make things easier, there's two icons to the right of your annotation scale. I just had to turn mine on because they were off. And if they need to turn them on, there's a small arrow uh, to turn those on at the right end of the status bar. The first one controls annotation visibility, and I suggest you leave it on so that annotation is not disappearing. The second one controls your um, whether the annotation scale automatically attaches itself to all annotation objects in your drawing as the annotation scale changes. And I suggest you leave that off so that objects don't have many, many annotation scales attached to them.